I was devastated uh, not to be selected, just purely uh, from the amount of time I'd spent with the team and a lot of years of hard work, various coaches, various systems, and you know, lower place finishes. And as we built up, finally it looked like we were going to have a pretty good crack at maybe winning a medal, and to get you know within a hair of getting on that final side and seeing them go over and playing in that 3-4 game, it was like a mixture of I'm really proud that I was a part of the build-up, but like the reality was I wasn't there. I was, you know, I, I took it pretty hard, but the, the amount of pride I have, I uh, didn't want that to be the end of me. I, you know, took that into the NBL season. So initially when the cut happened, I kind of felt like, well, I'm kind of used goods, you know, I've done my service for Australian basketball, blah, blah, blah. But when the kind of the dust clears and the, you know, all that kind of stuff, you, you can sit back and think, well, there's still, I still believe there's, a, there's opportunities for me. And I, I just signed here in Sydney for three years and I wanted to prove to the management of Sydney and the people who follow me that you haven't signed a bump. I wanted to show that I've still got stuff in the tank. And I guess that kind of carried me through to the season and inevitably got me back into the Australian side. And I'm, I'm proud of that and I, I want to keep on doing that. You know, I would like to try and play for Australia as long as I can. And if um, the day my number's not called, well, I can put my hand up and say, well, I went to two Olympics, I went to three World Cups and I won an Asian Cup. And, you know, it's not, not the end of the world.